Hey guys, it's Shan here from Shan Outdoors and I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to tell you guys a few years down the road how I feel about the Z-Pax Duplex and how it has performed. I purchased that tent in, I want to say 2021, um, 2020 or 2021 and I took it on some shakedowns, worked with it or messed with it in the backyard. I set it up. Um, I purposely took it out in the rain. I set it up during a tropical storm in my backyard and actually stayed in it overnight. And in Florida, our tropical storms are pretty rough. So after that, I was pretty confident that it could handle what Scotland would throw at it. So I took it to Scotland in 2022 and 2023. I did not, I did not do any camping on on the Isle of Skye. And I think that if I was doing the Sky Trail, I might want a tent that is a little bit sturdier or bring the freestanding flex kit that you can purchase for the duplex. I just don't, I don't know how well it would um, handle that. It did, however, go through a pretty good storm on the Great Glenway in the Abriacan Forest. Um, a big storm rolled through. Um, it actually made the news in the United States, um, that particular storm front. And the proprietor came out the next morning and was like, man, I didn't know how you guys were gonna do out here. Uh, the tent performed really well. Love my, my duplex. I absolutely love it. I don't think that I will ever part with it unless it is to buy an updated version. Um, Z-Pax has since made several versions of this tent. They make a zipper door version. They have changed the little toggles on the doors. Um, they have a light version that is much lighter than the one that I have. I have the spruce green, which um, is a little bit heavier than the blue and the other colors. Um, but mine, I believe was 20.5 pounds, I think. Pounds, no, 20.5. 20.5 pounds, I'm not taking that tent. 20.5 ounces, so um, extremely light tent. It's up with two trekking poles. You can just stake out the four corners and do that, or you can do as I prefer to do and do the four corners plus the two vestibules because I love a breeze. As far as condensation goes, I'm from Florida. Everything is wet. There's my, I have experienced mild condensation in Florida, in Scotland, in England with this tent. And another thing that is worth mentioning about this tent, I am five foot four. The foot area of my quilt cinches together to make a foot box. So I try to cinch all that together to keep it from flippity flopping around all over the place, touching the sides and getting wet. But I have experienced that in this tent, but I think that's gonna happen with any tent that you touch the side of. I mean, it's not um, exclusive to the duplex. Something that's been mentioned before, I think uh, Dixie from uh, Homemade Wanderlust has mentioned this in her videos before, as have other people. You have the bathtub flooring and then the material sides of the tent. Sometimes if your feet touch this, and push it out and it touches this or even goes past this, you will have drainage from the top that gets down into your tent. That absolutely can happen. It's never happened to me, um, but I 100% see how that could happen. Um, so I've had very minimal condensation in this tent, um, taking it in very wet and, and stormy environments. and. Now for the things that I would have changed or would have liked to have been different about this tent. So you've got a door that, like this and the tent pole's right in the middle. So you have to kind of shimmy around and try not to catch your foot on it or your arm on the um, trekking pole. I mean, if you set it up correctly, it's gonna take a lot to knock it over. The door also zips like a half moon and the material falls out or falls in. Uh, and that I didn't care for because it's either gonna flop out of your tent and get wet or dirty, or it's gonna flop in and you're gonna be stepping on it or snagging it or, or it's just not to me the best 
designed door. I don't know if they do it differently now, if there's been enough feedback that they've changed that, but you know, it didn't um, snag anything to my knowledge. I think everything in my tent is still just fine, but you do want to think about that because you're, you're scooting in and out. It's kind of awkward to get in and out of a tent. You got boots on, you're trying to not get things all wet. The possibility that you might snag something is there. Another thing that was a little bit uh, about this tent is the little toggle closures. Um, the toggle closure is on the outside of the doors. So when you're inside and you're trying to close up your vestibule doors, it takes a minute to really get good at it. Um, it's not a huge deal. I, it's not a deal breaker. And I don't think that's the way they do them anymore. But at the time it was like, mm, you know, it might take an extra couple seconds. And if I'm getting rained on or my gear's getting rained on, then you know it might be an issue. The tent is extremely lightweight. There's plenty of room inside. You can sit up, you can move around. I actually changed clothes in the tent uh, a few times. Um, and to that point, the material is very thin. Like you can see right through that sucker. So always be aware of your surroundings. Setup is not that difficult. Once you get it, you got it. Um, you just stake out the four corners and trekking pole, trekking pole, and ta-da, you're ready to go. The footprint is pretty small, so I think it's easy to get into smaller places with this tent, and I've just really enjoyed using it. Um, I think it will be a tent that I always use and continue to use for years to come. When I purchased the Z-Pax Duplex, it cost me $699. I don't think no, if it's still that price now, I think there are now different prices for different versions of this tent. It is definitely um, one that I feel is worth looking at if you are trying to get your gear lighter. So far, I've taken it um, to Scotland, Wales. I can't recall if I took it to Wales, England. Um, I did the Cumbria way with it. I did the Hebridean way in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland and there's some sketch weather out there. Florida, I think that's about it um, where I've gone with this tent. It, it's a great tent. So I don't think you can go wrong with the Z-Pax Duplex. Um, and in my experience, their customer service is very pleasant and very quick. So um, that's another plus with this company. So Z-Pax Duplex, it's a great tent. And in the few years that I've had it and all the miles I've put on it, it's still in great shape and it's still kicking. I'll do probably another video in another few years to let you guys know how it's holding up. But for now, if you're thinking about purchasing the Z-Pax Duplex, it is definitely a worthwhile purchase and I don't think you'll regret it at all. It's a great tent. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. This is Shan from the future, as you can tell by the different hair color. Um, that video was recorded a little while ago, but I did want to add something to it. One thing that I think is worth mentioning about the Z-Pax Duplex is that it is marketed as a two-person tent. With that being said, I do not feel that it is going to be comfortable for two people. I think that if it's good for a roomy one person tent, if you need two average sized people in this tent, then I would go with the triplex. Um, I think that is made marketed for three people. It may be a little more comfortable as a two person tent, but the duplex, I would not try to comfortably put two people in that tent. I think you're just going to be on top of each other. And if you want that, that's a great thing. But if you want room, then um, maybe look at the triplex. <laughs>